Here we are with the, the Pro Max 360 heads. These are going on a 632 cubic inch motor and uh, we're going to do some tricks to try to pull some more numbers out of them. I'm hoping that uh, we can get around 450 CFM with these cylinder heads. We're going to be doing some extensive chamber work somewhat. Uh, the valve diameter size is 2350 and 188. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and start the procedure. I wanted to go over them a little bit first. They look like a really good head. I love the exhaust port on this head compared to them assaults that I did. Hands down, this is going to be a lot better head than that Assault 345. Even though there's a 15cc advantage bigger, just the shape of how much they raised that exhaust and gave me this shape is, is absolutely going to work wonders with it. Alrighty, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with it. I guess the guest thing is to, first thing is to go ahead on the intakes and prep them for the tubes. Unlike uh, some of the other heads that I do, which, you know, the head bolt toes on a small block Chevrolet and a big block are 7 sixteenths. However, when you talk about studs, the inside wall diameter might ought to be a little bit bigger because the stud's body is thicker. So I know that this is going to get studs. I mean, not many people run a 632 that don't. So I got to make sure he's got some wiggle room. So I go to a little bit bigger tube diameter. This is a brass tube and it's fine. It's going on the intake side. And first that I use is I use a core drill, a, a drill to take the bolt material out. Then I come back and chase it with a ring. So let's go ahead and get this party started. Since this is the first thing I really have to do. And, ream, and drill the other hole then come back with a core reamer and do it then I'll show you how good the fitness is or the tightening setting it up for the brass tube. Uh, like I said nothing special there just a regular core drill and uh, the reamer now that's another story so let's get on with it. Now on to the reamer. We're going to ream it to size and like I always do it's about a thousandths or sometimes two thousandths smaller than the tube. Okay. So that takes care of that part. The holes are ringed and I'm going to show you how tight the clearance is on it after I do this. Okay. What I've done on some of these, on, on this one here especially, I decided to leave about a ten thousandths smaller ridge at the bottom. Kind of like what you do when you sleeve a block. Okay. I come in here and I've already fitted this one. Look here. Alright, look at that good tight, almost a press fit, but remember epoxy has to go on there, so it's got to be a little bit loose. Now it goes in so far, and then it anchors right here at this little bitty ridge that I leave at the bottom. Alright, and I'm going to let you see uh, how I do it, which is really not special to it. I think I've shown it before. It's just that on the studded motors, um, they need a little bit more roundness to it, so that way the stud will pass through. Okay, and I just get my sand roll. And
up on my sand roll there. I'm going to remove a little bit of that. Alright. just sliding off of it where I had the, the tool oil. So yeah, there we go. Alright, now there we go. That's it. So, now when I turn it around to this side, you can see the little ledge. Let me see if I can get in there and zoom in and let you see the little ledge. I'm going to try moving it back and forth. Yeah, you can see it. See how she bottoms out right there? I just do that. You know, it, it, it holds it in place. Not that I'd ever have a problem, but on something that's going to get the amount of torque that this does, it's just a little security measure I do on them. All right, so the tubes are fitted, which I always remember, if you're going to get bold and decide to tube them, the tubing has to be the fitment, the blending, all that stuff pertaining to hole size has to be done before you start grinding on the inside of the port. Trust me on this. You don't want what you get if you don't get that right. It's a, it can be a mess. I, early on years ago when I start, first started tubing them and stuff, that's what I found out. So, all right, anyway, got that straightened out. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna knock out. I'm gonna show you why I did that and tube this side. You're only tubing two of the ports, uh, which are the, the ones that get tubed are the hook ports, I do believe, and there's a reason for that. Alright, that's all for right now. Alright. 